Hello, and welcome to What's New in Sudo 1.9. I'm Todd Miller. I'm the Sudo maintainer, and I work for One Identity. And One Identity has sponsored Sudo development for the past 10 years. So today, I'm going to talk about what is Sudo with a brief overview, uh, and also review what the major changes were in Sudo 1.8, and then talk about what's new in 1.9. So what is sudo? The answer really depends on your use case. Um, if you're using a single user workstation, it can be just a way to run privileged commands without any real access control. Now in a large installation like um, enterprise, higher ed, government, it's often used as a way to manage privilege um, with fine-grained access control and logging of both commands and optionally sessions. So basically in a nutshell, sudo allows running privileged commands without using either a root shell or the su command. So each command is logged, and optionally, the terminal session can be logged too. Commands are run by using the sudo prefix. So for instance, uh, sudo vi at hosts, something like that. And the policy configuration is stored in a file called sudoers. So a brief history of sudo. First version was in 1980 in the, at SUNY Buffalo. And then five years later, there was an updated version posted to the net.sources news group. In 1986, one of the people from SUNY Buffalo moved to the Univers University of Colorado Boulder, and they brought SUDU with them. So at CU, um, SUDU was updated, modified, and um, it was really the, the release of the <clears throat> Unix System Administrator's Handbook from Evi Nemeth and others that really popular, popularized uh, SUDU. Now in 1991, a group of programmers um, who worked at the university released a new version of SUDU. Um, they also uh, worked for a consultancy called the Root Group, and so this is often referred to as the Root Group version of Sudo. And that version uh, was notable because it had the concept of um, host-based rules, so you could have specific Sudo's rules for different hosts. In 1994, I started making my own Sudo releases. 2003 saw the support for LDAP Sudo's, so Sudo's rules in an LDAP directory, and that was contributed by uh, another programmer. And then in 2010, uh, we saw session logging. And then in 2011, the release of Sudo 1.8 uh, brought plugin support, which I'll talk about later. And then now here we are in 2020 with Sudo 1.9, which has support for Python plugins and a logging server, all of which I'll talk about in just a moment. So what does a Sudoers rule look like? Um, basically, it an answers a couple questions. Who can do the, the uh, the command, where the command can be executed, as whom, uh, by default, that's root, and what the command is itself. So sudo does log about uh, every successful and unsuccess unsuccessful attempt to run a command. So there are different possible log destinations. By default, sudo logs to syslog, um, so you can do centralized logging. And for instance, um, advanced syslog daemons like syslogng will automatically parse the sudoers logs for you. You could also log to a local file on the local system, um, but that does have the possibility where someone could tamper with it. Um, also, it's possible to log via email, but usually that's only for most serious issues, such as a, a problem with the sewers file itself. So sudo does support session recording. What this means is it records the, the output of the terminal, so what the user sees on the screen, as well as the input, so what gets typed in. Um, it also can log standard input and standard output and standard error if for some reason those are not hooked up to the terminal. For instance, um, if there's a pipe or a redirection to or from a file. Uh, the session logs are stored on the local system, and they're compressed, but they're not encrypted, which does mean they could be tampered with. Uh, you can replay the session logs with a command called sudo replay. that lets you pause the log, uh, slow down, speed up, but it doesn't currently support things like fast forward and rewind. Uh, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. So the major sudo 188 features. Um, the main change is that, that sudo has kind of been broken up into uh, some separate constituent parts. So the front end is now separate from the policy. Um, so this means that plugins are used to implement both the policy and the logging, including the session logging. There's a conversation plugin used by, excuse me, conversation function used by the plugins for things like password entry, our information or warning messages. And then the, the front end queries the policy and runs the command. Now, because of this, uh, the split, we needed a way to configure the plugins themselves. And so that's what's done in the new sudo.conf file. 
and also has some other front end specific settings. So uh, the two plugins in sudo 1.8 are the policy plugin, which determines who can do what, uh, but there can only be a single policy plugin in use. And that's because it's difficult to compose uh, multiple policies that, uh, that may be uh, very different. And there is also an audio logging plugin, which is what does the session recording. And that does the terminal input and output, as well as standard in, standard output, and standard error if they're not hooked up to the terminal. Now, multiple IO logging plugins may be used. There's no problem having multiple ones there. And they're evaluated in the order in which they appear in the sudo.conf file. Now, onto the new stuff in 1.9. So the major features here are a log server, which supports centralized event and IO logging, uh, a new audit plugin type, which can support custom logging, an approval plugin type, which can add additional policy constraints on top of uh, the existing policy plugin, and Python support for all the plugin types, both the old ones and the new. So the log server, the basic idea here is that we want to be able to collect event and IO logs in a central location. So this is implemented as the sudo log serve daemon. Uh, and on the client side, the sudoers IO plugin uh, will support streaming events and IO logs to this uh, service and daemon. There's also the sudo send log utility, which can be used to send uh, existing logs that are on the local system. And as I said, the logs are streamed in real time. And the protocol is built with Google protocol buffers and secured with TLS, either 1.2 or 1.3, although that does require that you build sudo with the OpenSSL library to get that TLS support. And on the server system, we can use sudo replay just as we would normally. The, the logs on the log server are the exact same format as they would be on the local system, and so are uh, the workflow there is exactly the same when you're looking at the logs and replaying them. So the obvious question here is why not use syslog? So there are a couple problems with syslog. Historically, it hasn't really been reliable because it's used the, uh, the UDP protocol. That's the um, unreliable datagram protocol. And that meant that it's not possible to uh, detect a log failure. Also, another issue is the entries could arrive out of order, which makes replay difficult. And just in general, uh, replaying a session out of a log file that contains potentially multiple sessions, as well as other log information, uh, it's just a, a more difficult problem, and it's hard to um, do it reliably. Another issue is the <clears throat> for syslog, the maximum message size varies among different implementations. And we don't want to be sending uh, data that gets truncated on the receiver side. Another possible issue is that end-to-end -end encryption is not guaranteed. So potential problems here. What happens if the server is unavailable? Well, we can have multiple <clears throat> servers in the configuration file, and the connection failures um, can be handled either as a fatal error or something that gets ignored and where the command is allowed to run anyway. And these are all configurable settings in the sudoers file. There are a few things left on my to-do list for the log server. I'd like to support server-side load balancing. There's support for this in the protocol um, the basic idea is that if the log server is overloaded, it can redirect the client to another one in a group. And I'd also like to add support on the client side for transmitting uh, logs if the log server was unavailable for some period of time to trans uh, transfer the offline logs to that server when it comes back online. So now to the new plugin types. The audit plugin is basically an API to access the various data that sudo has about the logging. So there are a couple different logging event types. There's an accept event when a command is allowed, a reject event when the command is denied by the policy, an exit event when the command completes, and error events if there's a, an error in the front end or any of the plugins. So this required a minor change to the policy in IO plugin API. Basically, the plugins now have a way to report an error string back, whereas before it was just a yes or no uh, did it work or did it not? Now, multiple mm -hmm. audit plugins are supported, and sudo comes with an example plugin that just writes JSON output to a local file. So the audit plugin doesn't really replace the existing sudoers logging. In fact, uh, the sudoers plugin uh, now uses the audit API directly as of sudo 1.9.3. So the advantage of the audit plugin is we can have more details than the default sudo logs provide. That means the full details of the invoking user, things like 
all their various IDs and groups, their, their environment, uh, process ID, the parent process ID, things like that. It also gives us access to the full execution environment. So everything that sudo uses to run the command, that means the, the groups and users that it will run as, uh, as well as things like the environment that, that the command runs in, which can be different from the invoking user's environment. We can also get status from the other plugins. If there's a problem or every time any of the plugins approves or rejects a command, that goes to the audit plugin. And this can be particularly useful for from Python because a lot of the cloud-based services, things like logging as a service, um, these have client code written in Python, not necessarily in C. So this lets us talk to some of these cloud-based services directly without having to use some kind of external tool, such as something like syslogng. So the API is pretty simple. There's an open function that gets called before any of the other plugins, and that gets the user info, as well as the original argument vector that sudo is run with and the user's uh, initial environment. There's a close function that gets called last just before sudo exits, and that gets the command's exit status or signal number if it was uh, killed by a signal. There's also a show version function, which just displays the plugin version, and all the uh, plugins have this. So the real interesting things are the accept, reject, and error functions. Of, <clears throat> and these are called after the policy and approval plugins are called. And the accept and reject receive the plugin name and type. And in the case of the accept function, it also gets the execution environment that the command was run with. Uh, the error function is called if any of the plugins or the front end report an error. And it also gets the plugin name and type and an error string that describes the problem if one is available. So the approval plugin is additional policy that we can add without replacing sudoers or the policy plugin. And multiple approval plugins are supported. So some po potential uses for this are time of day restrictions. So for instance, if we wanted to allow the user only to be able to run commands during business hours or at some specific time, uh, just in time authorization, we could combine this with a permissive sudoers policy to allow a user to run any command, but only if it's approved by a third party. Um, we could also integrate it with a ticket system of some kind so that the user can only run commands uh, to solve a specific problem. So where the, their access is enabled when the ticket is assigned to them, and then it's revoked when the ticket is finished. Another possible use would be multi-factor authentication. I think for some reason, uh, the authentication provided by sudo is not sufficient. So the API looks like this. There's an open function very similar to the audit plugin API that uh, receives the user information, the original argument vector and environment. There's a check function that gets run after the policy approves the command. And that gets the command to run as well as the full execution environment as the policy plugin has uh, sent it. A uh, close function gets called pretty much immediately after the check. This doesn't wait for the command to complete. It's just a way of uh, cleaning up resources. And then there's the show version function, just like the other plugins have. It's just display as a version. So the other major change in sudo 1.9 is the Python plugin support. So this means that, that we can now run or write our plugins in Python instead of in C. It's the same basic API. And the policy, IO plugins, audit plugin, the approval plugins are all supported. And you can run those, write those in Python. So an advantage to this is that there's no compilation required. Um, this makes it a lot easier to distribute the Python, Python plugins to multiple machines. You don't have to worry about rebuilding them uh, for different architectures, things like that. So sudo comes with a Python plugin uh, shared object. And that has a Python interpreter embedded in it. And it also comes with a number of examples. There's a, the sudo blog has multiple articles about how to write uh, Python plugins. And I encourage you to check that out. So future directions. There are a few things that I have kind of uh, in my mind for, for future changes here. I'd like to finish some of the log server tasks, such as uh, load balancing and automated log forwarding when an online offline server comes back online. Uh, better shell integration, this would mean the ability to log commands run within a shell session. Right now, we can log when the shell is started, and we can log the, 
the session itself, but we don't have log entries when there's an individual command run from within that shell. Um, another thing that people asked for is the ability to merge multiple pseudoers files. If you have a disparate set of pseudoers files, uh, the ability to merge them into a single uh, cohesive file that could be distributed would be a useful thing. Um, pseudo replay improvements, I alluded to some of these before, things like uh, re fast forward, rewind, jump to the beginning, jump to the end, things like that just uh, to make it a little more usable. And then the final thing is a reporting utility. Um, some users have, <clears throat> have asked for a, an easier way to see who is allowed to run what and to make queries on the sewers file in that way. So those are some of my uh, things on the to-do list there. So that's it for what's new with sudo 1.9. Uh, there's more information on the sudo website. That's www.sudo.ws. And the sudo blog also has more information, blog.sudo.ws. Thank you for coming.